Warning, Marriage on the Rocks provides unfiltered, unconventional, and sometimes unwelcomed relationship advice. Seth and Crystal are certified relationship coaches who have adopted specific methods that work very well for them. Your results may vary. Hey everyone, welcome to our 33rd episode of Marriage on the Rocks. I'm Crystal. And I'm Seth. Every week we have a drink with our discussion, and this week we chose to kind of keep it simple and do margaritas. Were you already drinking yours before we started? No, why? I think you took sips already. No. Because <laughs> I filled them up the same. No. And yours you, is lower. You took a sip out of mine to taste it. Okay. <laughs> I think you were sneaking. <laughs> Anyway, we, we decided to do margaritas, strawberry margaritas. Somebody jumped the gun. And I decided to jump the gun and drink margaritas before the episode. Well, that turned out really good. It is good. Didn't it? Uh-huh. It's strawberry margarita, the most manly of all margaritas. <laughs> right, yeah. You look totally manly with your with the pink drink in your, in your hand. Well, it's a cactus margarita glass, and cactuses are prickly and rough. And tough. Yeah, manly. So it was real manly with the red sugar around the rim. Yes. <clears throat> so, awesome. uh, first and foremost, Happy New Year, Happy everybody. New Year. We hope everyone had a, a fun, safe holiday and Merry Christmas, uh, Merry Christmas, and all that too. Since we haven't been, since we haven't recorded since before Christmas. Mm-hmm. So hope everyone had a good holiday season. Um, but with with the New Year here now and. All of, of course, you know, everyone is setting resolutions and... Well, before that... Oh, I'm sorry. We, with the new year, we want... We've been talking about doing this for a while. Mm-hmm. And we just kind of kept putting it off and forgetting or just not doing it. And one of the things we are going to start doing every week for the episodes is... What did I call it? Uh, a depow? Depa- depow or something. <laughs> I shared depow. it... Or we shared it on Facebook at one point in time. Uh-huh. Um just we you know we all see and some of us may be guilty of sharing corny stupid relationship quotes or memes or advice or whatever it is Mm -hmm. um i know we share our our little things you know usually daily we've taken a break over the holidays but almost every day we share some little quote or something like that um but i've realized being even before we started doing this or stepping outside of even the the relationship coaching type of mentality of it is you see people share this stupid crap all the time Mm -hmm. and some of it is just i i read it and i'm like do you really believe that yeah like that that's that's what you really think a a good relationship is or you really think that that's a you know a standard of what relationship should be measured and and so i had found what i remember the one that i had initially yeah, put on there. It, it was it was it was a back. girl I knew. It's a girl I'm friends with on Facebook, mm-hmm. and she shared it. Uh, I guess because she's in a new relationship, and and she shared it, and I was just like, really? That that's that's what you think a relationship is? And so I shared it. And put here's here's or you just made the dumbass post of the week. <laughs> so if you're friends of ours, mm-hmm. and I see these, I won't tag you, but you may recognize what we start sharing. <laughs> Um, and that's, I'm going to call it the dumbass post of the week. Yeah. So we have our first one uh-huh. for this week yes. and I, I can't remember it. Um, and once again, that's I won't kinda, say it's kind of lengthy. I guess. It is lengthy. Oh. So I couldn't remember it. So I had to bust this out to, to read it. But this, this was from a woman mm-hmm. on social media. Um, and some of you may have seen this and at least one of you have shared this cause that's how I saw it. <laughs> but this is the dumbass post of the week. Uh-huh. Just, and I'll read it. It says, that crybaby ass girlfriend who got a savage ass personality and speak her mind, get on your ass over petty shit, keep her. That's your backbone. She gonna ride when no one else will. Keep it 100. <laughs> okay, so taking the context out of that, that's the worst message. Of why would a guy want a girl like that in the first place? Yeah. No, gu- no guy worthwhile? No, I, I don't like to say no guys because there are plenty of idiot men out there mm-hmm. that would be like, oh yeah, that's my girl. 
Well, they okay. They would yes. I think they would say that's my girl or whatever. But I think I don't think that any guy would be like, I want a woman like that. Yeah. After no guy. This. When you tell a guy, any guy, uh-huh. make a pros and cons list of the next girl you want to see. In the pros list, it's not going to say a crybaby ass, savage ass girl that gets on me over petty shit. <laughs> Nobody's going to put that on the list of, yeah. of a of a attractive partner. Mm-hmm. Um, so there's your dumbass post of the week. So keep them coming, people. Keep them coming. I'll share it every week. <laughs> well, now maybe people are going to be like, oh shit, I yeah. can't, I can't share that. Yeah. <laughs> maybe they'll think twice. No, because... don't. And then I won't have anything to talk about. So yeah. you, gotta, you gotta keep it up. Yeah, you have to. So yeah, we wanted to start a, a new little, a new little thing. So that's it. Um, and uh, and with the new year. We, again, it, we want to talk about resolutions. And I don't know. I think with resolutions for me or for us, really, we, we don't really, like, set specific resolutions every year. Because, I mean, we know that we have goals and stuff every year. But we continue that throughout the... Yeah, that, that's not something that we wait for the calendar to tick to yeah. the new year to start working on. Uh-huh. Um, if we have a new goal in the middle of the year, we're, we'll, we'll start it doing it get then. working on it, get it done. It was what we did with getting the coaching certification. Mm-hmm. It was, hey, we need to get this done. We plan on getting it done by the end of the year, or at least by the end of the year. We got mm-hmm. it done like a month early. Yeah. I mean, you, you shouldn't, I mean, yeah. There's opinions about resolutions, period, on mm-hmm. when you should or shouldn't set them, but we know that everybody likes to reflect and look forward to the next year and, and for some reason plan why they're going to do things differently. Yeah. And um, I mean, I hope that people will actually stick by the resolutions and, and stuff. But I mean, more often than not, they don't, people do not. So, <clears throat> um, but <laughs> I guess to not be so negative, we want to discuss some resolutions that are, I guess, good advice for the year coming for your relationship Mm -hmm. and so we have a whole list and we don't we were like going through the list and we were like i don't know if one is better than the other or you know Mm -hmm. um numbered one through 13 it looks like we have but uh but i guess the first one that we have on the list is to do good things for each other and you see, like, you see people do good things for each other during the holiday season and, you know, appreciate each other more. Or... For their anniversary. Yeah. Or for Valentine's Day. Right. Or they, just, they have special occasions when they show gratitude or, like you said, appreciation. Mm-hmm. And, yeah, so do it other, all throughout the year, the year yeah. but all year long, where you're not just doing it for those special occasions. Mm-hmm. And it, it could be little simple things. Yeah. I mean, we, we've talked about gestures and things like that, so we don't want to repeat all of those things, but you, you shouldn't be waiting for special occasions or holiday seasons or anniversaries or things like that to do good things for your partner. I mean, one of the things that, the simple things that we do is when, you know, one of us goes out to the store, we'll grab, you know, just our partner, a little treat or something. Maybe maybe it's something as simple as cereal. Cereal, I know. Or I'll get you like a little Reese's or something. Yeah, mm-hmm. something simple. But it, it's those little gestures like that just are a constant reminder to your partner that you're Thank you're you. thinking about them. Yeah. Even at moments when you know you you would probably take for granted that you were on their mind. Mm-hmm. So you know, doing doing things for one another and. Um, being generous to your partner, mm-hmm. um, and this goes with there. It's not just gifts; it's 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 everything. I mean, you shouldn't. I know, I know some guys that you know look forward to Valentine's Day and their marriage and the birthday because it's the three times a year they get to have sex. Yeah, you know. I know. And it's I mean that's that's horribly sad. Mm-hmm. But you know, being generous to your partner should just be something that happens all year long. Yeah, and I think that uh, the next one really it goes in good with this is saying thank you and I love you mm-hmm. to each other. 
and <laughs> regularly, regularly, daily, well, multiple times. A yeah, day. and and with because like you know if you do something sweet for your partner mm-hmm. and then they don't say thank you, it's like oh okay, you know like what was like I was thinking of you and then you can't even say thank you. Say two you. words, yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But yeah, yeah. Say thank you, and I love you. I mean, we've we've said it before on previous episodes. How often Seth and I say I love you to each other, and it's all the time. Mm-hmm. And yeah, I mean, our I love you means more than just I love you. It means it does mean thank you. Yeah, yeah. But we still say thank you. Yeah. Um, for all kinds of stuff. Mm-hmm. You know. When, you know, you cook dinner, and I say, oh, hey, dinner was great, thanks, or something. I mean, we're always saying thank you. Mm -hmm. Uh, And I think that some people have either knee-jerk responses to things, like if your partner goes out and they're thinking of you and they get you that whatever special gift or treat or something and they give it to you, your first word shouldn't be, how much did you spend on that? Mm -hmm. Should be thanks. And not followed by, are you sure we have the money? Yeah. But, Uh I mean, I think that... Just say thanks. Yeah. Say thank you and I love you. And if you aren't saying it a lot, say it more. Yeah. It's easy. Each of them are two words. Well, I guess if you say I love you, that's three, but... Yeah. That's funny. Uh, (laughs) I was just thinking... uh, I remember specifically on Christmas morning when you opened up your... um, Well, I bought Seth a comic that he's been wanting since he was a little boy. Mm Mm-hmm. And it was the Punisher, first appearance of the Punisher, um, Spider-Man 129. And he, it's an expensive comic. And I remember thinking, oh, I hope he doesn't ask, like, how, how much did you spend on this? Yeah. <laughs> um, especially because we had the, the Christmas episode, or, you know, the, the holiday episode. And, and we mentioned that, like. Oh, yeah, yeah. And, but you did, you said thank you first. Mm-hmm. A little bit later, you were like. Did you get a good deal on this? <laughs> well, yeah, because I know it's like... Yeah. Well, I, I text one of my friends. Uh-huh. And he's like, what the heck? He's like, those, those things, I've seen those things for a couple of thousand dollars. Well, I mean, I saw that one for six grand. Yeah, I know. You know, and I knew that you hadn't spent this, what we had seen on... Yeah. In no. the stores. <laughs> yeah. Um, so, but yeah. Sometimes, it, and it wasn't to to get on to you. I was just curious. No, I know. And you know, I didn't feel like you were getting yeah. on to me about it. I just, I remember, like, thinking Mm -hmm. (laughs) about that. Uh, The next one is to change your routine. Yeah, I think that so many people could benefit from this. Um, And uh, what was the context behind that when I had initially said that? Um, About changing changing the routine? Changing the routine. I, I think you... You were saying to, um, like... Was it about, like, spending not time get, with each other and stuff like that? Yeah, well, I, I think that it was kind of, like, not getting in a rut and stuff and, mm-hmm. you know, because then you can, you can end up, uh, if you're already, like, in that type of a situation where you are in a rut. Yeah. Well, I, I think, I mean, I mean either way, with, with the change in your routine... We are creatures of habit. And if you are that, you know, nine to fiver with your job and you, you know, barely see each other in the morning, you don't really connect throughout the day. You make time for each other. That's kind of what it was. Yeah. And then you get home uh-huh. and it's fix dinner, sit down in front of the TV and watch Netflix until mm-hmm. it's time to clean up and go to bed. Yeah. Um, a lot of things aren't happening. And things aren't taking place. And so sometimes changing up your routine is going to give your relationship a, a, a much needed shake mm-hmm. in certain instances to help ignite sparks and help reconnect and help rekindle and help recommunicate and um, reprioritize and all those things just by just ditching the current routine that you're on. Yeah. Um, and changing how you go through the week and the day with one another. Mm-hmm. Um, well, unless it's good, unless it's a good routine. Yeah, yeah, yeah. it's good. <laughs> then don't change it. But if it, if you if you're like getting ready for work alone, but your partner, uh, I don't know, starts work you know a couple hours later or something, maybe the partner that does start work a couple hours later than you 
can get up and maybe even cook breakfast for you and or hang out with you in the bathroom while you get ready Mm -hmm. you know have a conversation with you in the morning something to to so you have more quality time together yeah and not just stressed out time yeah and and it's, it's not necessarily because some of the cliche resolution stuff is spend more time together um and that's you know taking the assumption that you aren't but there are certain things that because of work and life maybe you can't really carve out so adjusting your routine and being flexible with your routine when you do have the ability to connect with your partner include your partner that's that's when you need to you know make those new habits a priority and once again the term habit meaning habitually so do it all the time so it that becomes your new habit. Yeah, is including your partner and, and a good habit, a mm-hmm. real good habit where y- you guys will start to enjoy each other again mm-hmm. and love each other and, and want to spend that, look forward to that morning <clears throat> together, the morning coffee or whatever it is. Mm-hmm. Or maybe it's and something it, at night. And it may mean going to bed earlier. It may mean staying up later. It may mm-hmm. mean getting up earlier. Yeah. Um, but though those little things like that are, are really going to help. Mm-hmm. Yes, definitely. The next one is, it's probably a given for us, but we, Seth and I like to work out together. Mm -hmm. And I think that it really helps couples to, I don't know, motivate each other and, um, again, spend good quality time together. And when it comes to fitness, and I know this is not an absolute, so don't take it this way. We believe you're going to have a higher success rate if you are going with your partner. Mm-hmm. Um, because that's something, like we, we've talked about it before, it's, that is some of our quality time. Mm-hmm. We, we aren't just at the gym at the same time, we are working out with each other. You're my spotter and I'm your spotter. We do the same exercises together. Mm-hmm. Uh, I think where this becomes a disconnect is, you know, for instance, it's the New Year's and so... The wife is going to the gym, scouting out the places she wants to go, and she picks the the lamest gym with the most Zumba classes or whatever dance cardio revolution class. Well, most guys aren't going to sign up for that. If you do see a guy in that class, mm-hmm. they're either there to look at women bending over or they're gay. Yeah. Um, so most husbands aren't going to be like, oh, yeah, I can't wait for Thursday night Zumba. Yeah. Uh-huh. And most of the women don't even – I don't know if they don't include the man out of – their girlfriends just want them to do it. But, you know, be the gym couple. When, yeah. when you go together, you get to push one another. And we talked about that mm-hmm. on the, the fitness, fitness one. episode. But I, I think that going together is going to give you a greater chance of success. Mm-hmm. It's going to, um, you know, everybody tells you should work out with a partner anyway. Most people tend to pick a partner of the same sex for various reasons, none of which are really extremely valid or extremely invalid. Mm-hmm. It's just what they do. But we, a lot of times, we are the only couple. couple not, not that we're the only couple in the gym, but we're definitely usually the only couple working out together. together. Uh-huh. Usually, you see the guy doing his own thing and the girl doing her own yeah. thing. And at least they're going together, which is fine. Yeah. And I'm not saying you shouldn't do that. But going together, at least, is going to give you time in the car to drive to the gym to talk yeah. about what you're going to do. You're each going to have goals you're trying to maintain. And you're there to, even if you aren't verbally motivating each other, the chances are both of you, unless you're both just weak at the same time multiple times, when one of you may not feel like going, the other one is going to convince you to go. Yeah. Say, no, we need to go. We haven't gone. We haven't done this. And I have a whole list of people going to the gym of, of what, what they should do for that first 30-day resolution period anyway. But mm-hmm. um, I think going with your partner is, is huge. You know, yeah. One of my friends reached out, and he and his soon-to-be wife are – Wanting to go to the gym and work Before out together. And uh-huh. He wanted a routine that they can both do together. Mm-hmm. Um, and so, you know, send them what, what we could to help them out. But that's that's how we believe you should approach it. You know, yeah. as a relationship and as a couple, do those things together. Yeah. It's so much fun, I mm-hmm. think. And I mean, we, we said in the, fin- in the fitness episode where, um, yeah, we push each other. And we... And it's nice to... To be able to to just feel good and feel good around my husband. I don't know. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Maybe. Well, and there 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 are there is there are sexual undertones 
when you're working out. Yeah. You're grunting, you're sweating, you're moving stuff. You know, if, if the guy's halfway manly, he gets to kind of show what muscles his strength and has. muscles he has. And, yeah. You know, and, and the, the, you know the, the woman's wearing tight leggings. And, mm-hmm. I mean, the, there's definitely some. I mean, that's why you have creepers at the gym in the first place. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. So that's the other thing. You shouldn't be letting your wife go to the gym by herself anyway. Yeah. Especially if it's a fitness club. Some creepers. Yeah, yeah I know. <laughs> the next one is huge and probably one of the biggest ones, I think. Um, but make sex a priority. Yeah. We, we, this may be the first time we've ever talked about that, right? <laughs> <laughs> we mention this all the time. Yeah. How important sex is. If you are not making sex a priority, you are sorely mistaken and you are doing a grave disservice to not just your partner and not just yourself, but your relationship. Yeah. Um, when sex isn't a priority, it's a domino effect of all kinds of other things that are going to be a problem and things that can happen. Mm-hmm. Um, we're going to be doing a, a are, is our next episode going to be about cheating? Oh, I don't know, Maybe. But this is that's gonna have a huge chunk to do with this. Mm-hmm. Um, but uh, yeah, yeah. I mean, you you should, you know. And I think that changing your routine and doing some of the things we're talking about on this should help with that. Mm-hmm. Um, but it should it should be sex with your partner should be a huge priority. And if it's not, now is your chance to change it mm-hmm. and figure out why it's not and what you need to do to make it a priority. Yes. Um, if that's work on yourself, then get it done. Mm-hmm. If it's work with your partner, then get it done. I mean, it's, you know, stop making excuses about it. Yeah, I know. Yeah, it's it's very, very important, and we can't stress it enough <laughs> to have sex often. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Good sex, too. Yep. <laughs> uh, the next one is to put your partner's needs first over everything, over family, friends, hobbies, everything. Mm-hmm. Yeah, um... I mean, this falls under the stuff we've been talking about, you know, the sex and all, all that stuff. Mm-hmm. The, uh, you know, the gestures, the gratitude, the love yous, the thank yous, all that. I mean, their, your partner's needs should be at the top of the list. Mm-hmm. Um, and once again, if you've gotten buried and busy because of work and kids and life and, and family and in-laws and parents and brothers and sisters or whatever it is, reprioritize those. You know? Well, yeah, and now, I mean, with the new year starting and everything, it's... It's time to change that back to put the focus back on your relationship and put the focus back on you and your partner instead of the family and, you know, doing all the holiday stuff. Mm-hmm. Now is the time to, to get all that shit together. Yeah. Yeah, it is. I mean, it's all, most of us have just spent time with friends and family. Mm-hmm. We'll, you know, wrap it up, you know, during the new year time frame and then... Most of us don't get or take vacation for the next several months. Yeah. And this is a perfect opportunity before, you know, if you've got kids before spring break, if you, you know, mm-hmm. it's most, most places and people that listen, it's winter time. You're going to be kind of shut in and around each other a lot. It's the perfect time to reconnect. It's the perfect time to start having more sex mm-hmm. um, in the winter time. And if you're, if you're going to the gym and you're getting a little more self-confidence and you feel better about how you look and, you feel better about how you feel and, you know, in any type of that stuff that ties to the benefits of, of the gym is also going to give you the benefits of reprioritizing that sex, which is going to give more benefits into reprioritizing your partner's needs and, mm-hmm. and all that stuff. So it's, it's the perfect time, you know, seasonally and within the year and the, the reconnection you've had with everyone's past and now it's time to refocus and, and get, like you said, get this shit together and realign everything yeah i think that um a good little uh, uh, like a a good little stay in date night Mm -hmm. (laughs) type thing would be to for someone to make a nice dinner a candle lit dinner Mm -hmm. and stay in and you know it's the winter months like you said and you know have a nice meal together have a healthy meal together Mm -hmm. since you you know most people usually do health and fitness type resolutions Mm -hmm. make a nice healthy meal and stay in together and enjoy each other yep uh the next one is to try new things in bed yeah uh yeah it kind of goes on to the tack on to the sex one too but i i I don't know if people get 
that could be part of breaking up the routine. Yeah, yeah, with, it could. With yeah, how you have that's true. the the sex you have, um, if it's fallen boring, if it's you know one of you's not as pleased or one of you don't last as long or whatever uh -huh. comes from it, change it up. Yeah, change it up. Get adventurous if you want, yeah. and and like, don't be embarrassed to try new things with your partner. Mm -hmm. It's your they you married them for a reason. You're with them <laughs> because you should feel comfortable around right. them. They should be the person that you tell everything to. And if you can't talk about sex and trying new positions or, or what you like and what you don't like, but just try it. Why not? <laughs> yeah, you, you know, I, 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 I feel really bad for people that are embarrassed to talk to their own partner mm -hmm. about what they want to try or how they want to explore or, or whatever it is they want to do. Um, th there should, you shouldn't be with someone where there's anything in that realm that's too taboo to even discuss or have a conversation about. Yeah. Um, it should be something you're, you're comfortable discussing and, and comfortable you're sharing with your partner. And I think that, you know, some of that is, is, <laughs> is within reason, um, with what that is. I, I hope there's not, a bunch of guys are like, you know what? You're right. This year's the year. I'm going to bring up that threesome. Oh, gosh. No, no. <laughs> yeah, no. So, and we're, we're not saying that. <laughs> yeah, we don't, I mean, I don't think, or we don't think that that would be a good idea. No. But, I guess to each their own. Yeah. <laughs> um, but yeah, I think that, I think you should, uh, you should definitely try new things and, and have fun with it. Yeah. Have the conversation at least. Yeah. See what your partner thinks. Well, and then I think once you have the conversation, you know, the first time, and maybe even, you know, the second time, it gets, it'll probably get easier to talk about. If you are uncomfortable talking about it now, mm -hmm. it'll get easier and easier. I mean, it's just like, I guess, even with the podcast for me, like, you were used to talking in front of a crowd and you know, in front of mm -hmm. a big audience and stuff. And me just even talking just in front of the camera, there's not even a whole bunch of people, you know, yeah. watching me. <laughs> <laughs> but just, like, knowing that mm -hmm. people are going to be listening, it was hard. But, you know, as it went on, it just gets easier and easier. Yeah. Well, and I think it's funny because I, I just thought of this. Mm -hmm. And I don't know if we should save it. But if you're going to do that, you, you mentioned do a stay-in date night. Uh-huh. That would be the perfect opportunity to... One, one of the funnest things that we did recently, and I say recently, it was, it was this, this past year, 2018, where we did, we really started to get into whiskey, and so we sat down and we did a bunch of yeah whiskey tasting at our house. Yeah. And I, I was thinking that whether it's whiskey or it's wine or whatever it is that you and your partner would be into, you could have... You, each of you could make a list of... Let's say you've got five different wines you want to try. Mm -hmm. Each of you write a topic per bottle of wine. So that will give you ten topics uh -huh. that you could fold up and put in a hat. And when you crack open that, that red, you pour it, you're going to taste it. And that gives each of you a topic to discuss. Mm -hmm. And one of those topics could be, and it should be fun, but that, that could be, you know, new sexual positions or sexual fantasies or whatever it is. Yeah. And as you are drinking, you're going to get a little more relaxed, you're going to feel yeah. a little more comfortable having that conversation, but that could be a, a fun, hot little yeah, little date night. Yeah, that, that'd be really fun. Uh huh. Let's do that this week. <laughs> Sounds fun. Yeah, it does sound fun. That's I a good idea. That. If anybody tries it, let us know. Yes. Yeah, I, I know. Yeah, I, and, and thank us no. mm -hmm. <laughs> for the fun idea. <laughs> um, let's see here. The next one is stop making excuses. Yeah, I already think I said no excuses while yeah, we go. Uh -huh. but, and usually when I typically say this in my own personal commentary outside of this, it's usually fitness related. Mm -hmm. But especially reflecting back on 2018, I, I, I probably would say this every year looking back, but I saw so many excuses for so many different aspects of people's lives that mm -hmm. had nothing to do with fitness. It was work, 
it was people I worked with or people that used to work with me or whatever it was that it seems like everybody just had an excuse for everything. Mm -hmm. Well, we're having marriage problems because of whatever. Mm -hmm. If you're a label, if you're, I'm sorry, if you're able to say because of, that means you've already identified the problem. What the problem is. So just fix it. Mm -hmm. Uh, And I think that we, for some reason, people nowadays want a pat on the back for just suggesting that they're going to do something better mm-hmm. or they're going to change or they're going to you know go out after this or oh hey hey social media world i just want everybody to know i applied for a new job a nobody cares and and b talk about it after you get it that's true it shouldn't be what you're going to do uh-huh. so just get it done well, quit I, making excuses yeah and i think that i think that getting it done does talks way more to it really shows everybody yeah. I guess way more than just saying something don't talk about it be about, about it, it. Yeah. yes yeah um, and yeah and don't shove make, it in my face <laughs> don't make it yeah don't make it <clears throat> yeah but, but people people make excuse all the time well when are you gonna go back and you know finish school well when I get around to this has got to do that. Or when are you guys going to get married? Well, we got to finish doing... I mean, yeah. it's just... When are you going to get engaged? Well, we got... I mean, it, there's, there's just always... People just seem to have excuses on why they're not moving forward. Uh-huh. Or why they're falling, stepping backwards. I know. Um, That's even worse. Time is not on anybody's side. No. And, and we, we are at a point where so many people, especially... I would blame younger people, but I see people my own age doing the same thing, that they just think... That over time, life will sort itself out and it will hand its blessings over to you just because time passed. Mm-hmm. Your, your clock's ticking. Time is running out, whether you want to admit it or not. And it's not a friend and it's not on your side at all. So quit waiting for things to happen. Mm-hmm. Take control of it and, and get it done and stop stop letting yourself get away with making the excuses. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I know. I don't like that. I don't like the people... Um, I'll hear people say that, you know, well, God will, you know, work, it'll, everything will work out because God, you know. It's in God's hands. Yeah, it's in God's hands and, you know, he will, he has my best interest and, which, yes, I agree, but you have to freaking do something also to make that Mm -hmm. happen. You shouldn't and, be using that as a cop out to not right. make a decision or move forward or or progress or whatever. That that becomes people use that as another excuse mm-hmm. yeah. to not do what they should do. I know. Well, and I, and they use it in, as an excuse to. I guess it, we can go into that with the cheating episode yeah. too. But yeah, to staying in a bad relationship to and stay everything. In a bad relationship. Yeah. So yeah, stop making excuses. Period. Uh, this one I really like. The next one. It's, uh, say yes. Say yes to... That's been a big thing for us this year. Yeah, or yes. Or in 2018. Or in 2018. Yeah, it, it really was. And, or, or ask is, you know, our, our thing. You don't know unless you ask. Uh-huh. And just say yes if the opportunity comes up. Yes. And we stole that from Always Sunny in Philadelphia. <laughs> yeah. There's an episode with Charlie and Dennis where they Charlie just says yes to everything. And they have the freaking... The best day of their life. <laughs> the most awesome time ever. And so it kind of just started to happen. We didn't intentionally plan to do it. <laughs> no. It just kind of started happening by accident. And we, we... We... I think a couple of things played out. One, we decided not... We were always like, well, what's the worst thing that's going to happen? Mm-hmm. Let's just go with it and see what happens. Um, so it was a calculated risk mm-hmm. with a higher reward than than risk, I guess, or than you know a fault. But it it really it, it was kind of a I don't want to say it was a courageous step, but we just decided to not be afraid mm-hmm. of what would or wouldn't happen. Um, and people are are sometimes too hesitant and too scared mm-hmm. to take any of those type of risks. And we were fortunate that. I think all of them swung our our way, mm-hmm. and you just wouldn't have known if you didn't take the risk, if you didn't ask mm-hmm. the question, if you didn't approach the subject, if you didn't say yes. So when we say say yes, just go with it. Yeah. When something comes up and somebody's like, "Hey, how would you feel about 
doing this. And yeah, let's mm -hmm. try it. Yeah. Let's do it. It'll help you get new experiences. It'll open your eyes to new things. And say yes to your partner. Yeah. I mean, and it, 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 I think it's sometimes, it's something you can even know inside that, you know, I'm going to take the day. And anything and everything my partner asks me, I'm going to say yes to. Mm -hmm. um, just to see how it feels. It, and I think it really makes it a, like a positive experience, mm -hmm. you know, and I think that your partner can probably appreciate it or will probably appreciate it yeah. when you do that because they're like, wow. Mm -hmm. you're... And I mean, one of the funnier ones was on the cruise uh -huh. when people yeah. thought that, you know, I was one of the wrestlers. Uh -huh. I could have been like, oh, whoa, whoa, whoa. well, hold on, I'm not. Yeah. But then we wouldn't have had the story and the experience <laughs> yeah. and everything worked out for it because it was like well what's the worst that's going to happen somebody's going to realize it's not like they're going to kick us off the boat yeah we pay, already paid for yeah we already paid for everything we already got our room i mean nothing bad's really going to happen yeah i won't even be embarrassed i mean yeah. it's just funny um <laughs> but so many people are just too afraid to even do that yeah you know people are afraid to approach new adventures or, or new opportunities or and i think a lot of it ties in with the don't make excuses. Mm -hmm. But it does. Because mm -hmm. you're too scared. Maybe it's not say yes. Maybe it's don't be a chicken shit. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. I know. Well, and even with, even with, like, I don't know, maybe you guys would take advantage of this, but even with sexual physicians. Yeah. You know? <laughs> just say, say yes. yes. <laughs> yeah. Oh, ladies, just go along with it. You never know if, you, if you're going to like, like it. it. Yeah. <laughs> Oh, hey, <laughs> why not try it? <laughs> uh, the next one is leave the past in the past. And I think that a lot of people uh, talk about this and, and I think that, I think you should leave the past in the past, but I think that so many people, I guess it's, this saying is kind of played out almost. With, about uh, leaving it in the past? Yeah, with people, like, so many... So many people uh, say this, but the thing is, is actually leave it in the past. Mm -hmm. Actually put everything behind you because if you're not going to get over something or if you, if you say, okay, I forgive you, then that means you forgive them and that's mm -hmm. it. And so don't bring it up again. Don't, you know, later on get in a fight and bring it up. Just freaking leave that shit mm -hmm. behind. Well, and, and I, I look at this from the, the perspective of if, if, you have, if you have made the decision after you have found out, if you've made the decision to stay with your partner after something has happened where a lot of people would leave the relationship, mm -hmm. whether it's cheating, whether it's you know, their behavior, whether it's their whatever they did that, you know, We've been pretty clear and open and honest with what we know would end our relationship. Mm -hmm. So if it's any of those things that you have, you know what's, they've laid out their hand, you've caught them, whatever has taken place, and you have still decided to stay, that's how I look at this. Mm -hmm. Then leave it in the past because you are no longer allowed to complain about what they did. And you mm -hmm. can't hold it over their head and you can't bring it up and you can't get back at them and you can't get revenge. It's a dead issue. You you absolve them of their sin by staying with them. Yeah, yeah, I th I think that that's and that good. that's my take on it. I know a lot of people don't agree with that. Yeah. Um, well, I think that they should agree with that because well, everybody should agree with what I say. <laughs> but we know that that doesn't always happen. <laughs> I know. Well, there would be a lot more happily married people or happily single people. Yeah. Well, but with um, but I think that you should also leave dumb little shit fights in the past yeah. too you know dumb stuff that because what's the what good is it to mm -hmm. to continue to bring that stuff up if you're if you're gonna continue to fight about it then you're not doing anything you're not leaving it in the past i mm -hmm. guess yeah you're not in and you can't move forward yeah you're not gonna grow as a couple you're not gonna grow as a person you're not gonna Improve, improve your relationship when you're keeping that that dark, dirty cloud hanging over the both of you. Mm -hmm. And you can sit there and want to blame your partner for that cloud being there, but like I said, if you made the decision to stay with them, 
or attempt to move past the argument or the fight or the disagreement, once that decision has been made, it's squashed. Mm -hmm. It's done. It's over. Forget about it. Yeah, I know. Well, I think that, I think like with, with yours, like yours is more of a bigger, a, a bigger I guess the problem. bigger problem, yeah. And mine was more of the smaller stuff, which is which goes in with the next one is to to so not I focus on big picture and you're more day to day. Yes, yes. <laughs> <laughs> but don't sweat the small stuff. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I mean, it's it's. I I, I did. I, there's there is a cliche little meme that's been floating around for years. I saw it again the other day. It was I think it said. Uh, it was not going to matter in five years why spend five minutes getting upset about it. Mm-hmm. And I think that that kind of applies to that, to your type of mm-hmm. situation. Mm-hmm. Um, with, the, with the fighting and the little disagreements and stuff like that. If, if you're still bringing it up five years later and you're still angry and miserable over that, that's on you. That's no longer on your partner anymore. Yeah. It's your fault. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I know. The next one is... Plan or have a conversation about your future. Plan your freaking future. I mean, a lot of couple. I, I even said in my last relationship, we never had that conversation. Yeah. We were married twelve years. Never once talked about where we were going to be at in five years. Mm-hmm. And I'm finding out more and more that most couples don't have this conversation. Yeah. What's the end game? What's it look like? What does your relationship with your partner look like when your kids have graduated and moved out? Mm-hmm. What is that future going to be? What or what does that look like? Are you guys ready for that? Are you guys saving for retirement? Are you ready to, you know, get a motor home and travel around the world? Or what, what? What are you going to do in the future? And I think that it doesn't have to be when we're sixty-five. I think it can be where are we? What are we going to be doing in two years? Mm-hmm. Um, you know, one of the things I'm really, really big about is you should be able, especially this time of year. This is usually when I do it. You should be looking back and say, hopefully, if you've done things right, Mm -hmm. you're more successful now this time of year than you were last year. And hopefully you're way more successful this time this year in 2019 than you were in 2010 and in 2009 and 2007. And if you're not and you have either been stagnant or, worst case scenario, you're doing worse. I know. You have made some real shitty life decisions. Yeah, you really need to... Evaluate yeah. the whole situation. What if you aren't constantly being and creating more success for yourself and growing more as a person and growing more as a relationship? It, it shouldn't. It shouldn't just be this this game of life of rolling the dice and picking a partner and sitting there and raising kids and just waiting mm-hmm. and not doing anything and not you know improving yourself and improving you know your and your partner improving themselves and you guys improving your marriage or or maintaining a happy marriage, or whatever that may look like, mm-hmm. um, you know. And, and it's it's the we talk a lot about self reflection, but that's the ultimate self reflection of mm-hmm. at least established time frame mm-hmm. that you can associate. Well, this time last year I was making X amount of money with this kind of job, and this year now I'm not. What happened? Yeah. And not only what happened, but once you identified it, that's where you start talking about where you're going. Yeah. Well, what am I going to do to get back to that point? Mm-hmm. Maybe yeah. I need to get more education. Maybe I need to, you know, be the hardest worker in the room. Maybe whatever it is. Um, but, you know, planning for your your future with one another is something that so many people just don't discuss. And yeah. it, it has to be something that you're talking about. I think that people probably are just like, well, I'm just living. It's in God's hands. It's in God's <laughs> hands. I'm just living... In the moment, or you know, day by day, and no, you you need to you need yeah. to plan. You need to well, do more for yourself and your yeah. your life and with your partner. People are walking, talking, social media memes, mm-hmm. and those are the same people that are like, you know, life isn't guaranteed for tomorrow, mm-hmm. so do what you want to do today. And, well. Is that true? Yes, for a very small percentage of our population it is. But the chances are, if you are here now and you've been here your entire life, you're probably going to be here tomorrow. <laughs> well, yeah, but with those people saying that, fucking listen to what you're saying to everyone yeah. else. 
do it. Yeah. Freaking. Right, 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 right. Yeah, you, yeah you, you can't have one or the other. Yeah. <laughs> right. You can't say, oh, yeah, everyone, you know, that you, you don't, and, you know, tomorrow's not promised or whatever, so mm-hmm. do this, do that. Well, yeah, you, you should listen to that advice mm-hmm. because you need to do that. Yeah, 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 you've got a good point behind that. Um, but I think that those, the, the people that, that don't plan fall on that type of mentality mm-hmm. when it's convenient. Yeah. Well, I don't plan because we don't know if, if you know, life will be around for that. We'll, we'll, you know, we'll cross that bridge when we get to yeah, it. Yeah, I, I hate that. I or hate whatever that it is. Yeah. <laughs> I really do. Yeah. yeah, I don't know. I mean. If you know where on the road the bridge is, have a road map. Yeah, I know. <laughs> you should at least know what you're going to do when you get to it. I think that, um, well, I, I mentioned it in one of our previous episodes about about thinking where, you know, how is my relationship going to be in the future? And that that's how, what I thought about with my ex. Mm-hmm. Where Where is this going? You know, am I going to be with a drug addict my whole life Mm -hmm. am i really gonna be happy (laughs) that way yeah you know really look at at your situation and if you're if you find yourself saying am i gonna be happy freaking do something about it and and talk to your partner and say we need to change Mm -hmm. we need something needs to happen well and if you're unhappy now What's going to make you happier in the five years? Mm -hmm. If you're able to identify the faults and the problems in your relationship and your partner right now, what's going to change that? Yeah. Like we said, if you're able to say, well, we're not happy because my partner's disengaged. We aren't having sex. We don't communicate. We're into different stuff. We don't have anything in common. If you're able to list off why you're having all of the problems or why you're so unhappy, you've identified what the problems are. Mm -hmm. So what are you doing to fix it, yeah. and it's it, and, and it's it's something I get so frustrated with because it's the same thing, and, and what I'm sure people will roll their eyes, but it's the same thing with fitness. <laughs> oh, I'm I'm 50 pounds overweight. I want to lose my arm fat. My butt's too big. My legs look awful. My stomach hangs over my belt. Whatever it is, you know what you need to do to fix it. You, know, you are yeah. making the conscious decision to not do it. You've already identified all the problem. You know how you got there. Mm-hmm. Here's how you fix it. And it's the same thing with the relationship. You know what's wrong. You've identified the problems. Have more sex. Talk more. Go on vacation. Yeah. Communicate with one. I mean, you. There's. It, there's no secret. Yeah. Yeah, I know. Yeah. And to that's, happiness. Uh-huh. <laughs> People make it sound like it's this. It's this awful, twisted, tangled road that you have to navigate through life in order to find this happiness tree somewhere. When it's easy to get to if you just do the right thing and aren't stupid and hopefully you don't have an anchor of an idiot partner <laughs> right um but yeah so it's it, it's irritating <laughs> are you done with your your mm-hmm. rant yeah yeah but i just realized mm-hmm. these taste like the chilies strawberry margaritas do they yes i mean i never had the chili ones because oh i didn't either I always, I always had the regular margaritas, and yeah, the Chili's margaritas. I don't know what the uh, what it is about them, but they are so good. We like them, and in in Denver when we lived there, we would go on date night and have Chili's margaritas, and they were buy one get one free. So we would go there and and do that, but they don't have that in Oklahoma. Yeah, they don't do it in Oklahoma. It's so stupid. <laughs> we're like, what? No, buy one, get one. Well. Uh, but back on track. Uh, the last one, I can't believe we've already went through all of these. Mm-hmm. Is the, this the last one? Yeah, this is the last one. And it's play together. And, I mean, there's all kinds of fun little stuff yeah. that you can do. I mean, we mentioned, you know, some stuff at well, the, the beginning of the episode. This is, uh, I, this applies to people that have a lot in common or don't have a lot in common. Find some kind of common ground. Mm-hmm. And pl- playing together is is literally that. Mm-hmm. Go play. Go go play mini golf. Go bowling. Go, you know, even my son and his girlfriend have video game stuff mm-hmm. where they can play together and, and share interests. And, and, you know, she kind of picked up on what he was into. And, mm-hmm. you know, and you and I play together. And 
it's just one of those things where you, you should be able to have fun with your partner. Yeah. Horsing around and goofing around and having fun and interacting. I mean, we do. We have, you know, Mike and Angie do mm-hmm. their little win it, in it to win it or minute to win it. Yeah, little game nights. Game nights that we do. And, and you know, it's a, usually a bunch of couples over there playing. Yeah. Um, if you're ultra super competitive... You may need to be careful with the games you pick. Yeah. And you and I usually try to... Uh, we're not real bad with, like, the bowling and the golf and stuff like that. No, uh-uh. And even when we play video no. games, we're always playing on the same team. Yeah, that's true. I I was super excited that the one time in Arkansas that I beat you for the one round of, of well, mini, mini golf. <laughs> by one... Stroke, right? Was it just one or was it two? Well, I, I don't know if it was one or two because I because I, I blew it at the end because I got frustrated. <laughs> you blew it because I needed I needed because if I would have got the hole in one, I think I would have tied it or something. Oh uh, yeah, but yeah, yeah. and you got because you got like three hole in ones, yeah, like all yeah on that match, uh-huh. and I didn't get any, so I was uh-huh. like, but yeah, but, but then didn't, didn't you like completely blow it the, the next, next game one. by like seventeen <laughs> yeah. strokes or something? Yeah. yeah. But Seth and I, we're, we are pretty competitive when it comes to that kind of stuff as it is. Mm-hmm. But we don't, like, let it... Well, even, like, if we go to some place like a Dave & Buster's, we, we usually pair up as a team mm-hmm. to try to get all the tickets. It's not competing yeah. with one another. Yeah. Um, I think we do really good with trying to just get on the same team. Yeah, unless it's that stupid game... What is it? The phrase one or what was it? Catchphrase. Oh gosh, I'm awful at it, and I I just can't like think in the moment or something, and and the pressure is too yeah much. the pressure is way too much, <laughs> and I just get frustrated. I mean, Dana and Darren can freaking attest to the madness that I go through. With that was that game. seven New Year's Eves ago. Wow, that's crazy. I know. Well, we haven't played that game since. <laughs> <laughs> we haven't. I, I've watched. I've watched Seth play it again with other people, um, and I'm like, oh. If oh, I'm yeah. paired up with a guy, uh-huh. we you guys can we it, no whoever the dude is we well and it's the same thing like when we do charades uh-huh. or we have that adult charades game. Yeah, we but play. we do good with the adult charade. Adult charades. You game. and I do. Yeah. 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 yeah uh-huh. Together. We yeah. do good with that one. Yeah. I'll say that. But yeah, and that, that's what kills me is you. You usually do really good with the charades with other people. Yeah. But. That like catchphrase. catchphrase, taboo, things like that. Oh, it makes me so angry. You get so angry about it. <laughs> yeah. But, yeah, okay, so back to have fun together. Do fun stuff. Play, yeah. Yeah, go play. And, um, I mean, we, it's not playing, but every, geez, it seems like every, yeah, pretty much every week, lately we've been going comic book shopping. Mm-hmm. And it was because I, I saw how much fun Seth was having getting his comics and stuff like that. I was like, I want to do that too. Like, I want I want my own little run that I collect. Mm-hmm. So now it's, we go to the comic stores. I get to look for my little stuff. I'm like, oh, look, they have this one. Or you'll you'll see one mm-hmm. that I want or something. Yeah. And it's fun. We we have fun together with it. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I mean, it, and it, once again, all of those things tied together. Mm-hmm. Um are really just about making sure you spend more time mm-hmm. or as much time with your partner as you can. Mm-hmm. Uh, so so that, I think that's the biggest thing for the whole, for this whole episode is spending the quality time with each other mm-hmm. and make sure to, the, yeah, the biggest thing is to make sure that your partner is your number one priority mm-hmm. with all of it. Yeah. And if they're not, figure out why mm-hmm. and reprioritize. If there if there is something that you feel is keeping them from being the priority, mm-hmm. you should remove that. Um, you should adjust that. And I think that sometimes priorities can work in tandem. Um, and I've said it in other episodes, and we've talked about it on other ones, that it still shouldn't be 50-50. At, at worst, it should be 49-51% uh-huh. with, with who you're paying attention to. Mm-hmm. And that 51% should be your partner. Um, and so, you know, you said it, I think you said it really good that this is the perfect time of year to get back on that page and refocus your, your energy and your commitment and your dedication to your relationship and your partner. If you really think it's, it's worth, I don't want to say saving, but if you really think that there's value within your relationship, 
Well, and you should think that there's value yeah. in your relationship. And whatever obstacles you had in 2018 or before, leave it in the past. Yes. <laughs> like we said. Mm-hmm. And, and focus on what you're going to do from this point on to ensure that you guys find happiness together. And none of that bad stuff happens yeah. again. Yeah. Learn, Learn from, from your mistakes. mistakes. Yeah. Learn from them. Don't repeat them. Mm-hmm. And unfortunately, this is something that takes both partners. Yes. It can't be a one-sided ordeal. It can't be one person, one person listing off you know, their resolves for the year and another person not doing anything. It has to be mutual. Mm-hmm. And if it's not... That's a lot more work to try to drag somebody unwilling along on the journey that you're trying to move your relationship. I know. Yeah. So, yeah, I think that's a good ending to to this episode. Um, as always, thank you all for listening. Um, of course, don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel. Um, subscribe to our SoundCloud. Like us on Facebook. Follow us on Instagram and all that, and we will talk to you next week. Thanks.